If you haven't already heard, Perseverance Mars rover landed on Mars four days ago on February 18th. This Mars rover is the newest and most advanced rover NASA has sent to Mars. First you have to know that the first Mars rover was Sojourner, which got there in 1997. This Mars rover only weighed 10 kilograms and it could only pass 20 centimeter obstacles. And this was a huge problem because there's a lot of bumps and rocks and stuff on Mars. For 1997, this is the most advanced rover NASA could come up with. Before Sojourner, there was a lot of concepts on what a rover should look like. And for that, there was a lot of other designs. This is what the Soviets designed. They put like ski looking wheels cause they thought it's like a snow or like a soft sand. But after some research, they found that skis are stupid and it should just have wheels. This advanced technology for 1997 came with a solar panel. And because Mars is really cold, they had to put heaters for the solar panels so it doesn't freeze. You guys should know, the weather on Mars, it could go as high as 20 centigrade, like on a summer day, or a negative 70 on a winter night. Sojourner couldn't contact Earth itself. It collected all of the data and gave it to the base that it landed with. And the base that it landed with would send a signal to Earth. This advanced machine for 1997 couldn't go a radius of more than 500 meters. Let's move on, but even though it wasn't that advanced, it gave us the first picture of Mars. And this is that photo, the first picture that you can see what the surface of Mars looks like. Even though this was the most advanced technology in 1997, looking at it now, it's not advanced at all. It couldn't go more than 100 meters in its life. And after 85 days, it stopped working. But it did a couple good things. First, it gave us this picture, and it showed the scientists what the surface of Mars looks like, and it helped NASA build the next Mars rover. Sojourner, before its death, helped us out another way, and it showed us that on Mars, there used to be water, and this was really important for scientists. Even though it only lasted 85 days, but the NASA scientists were extremely proud of Sojourner. Let's fast forward six years later to 2003. NASA was designing some new rovers for Mars, and these two were it, Spirit and Opportunity. These two, with one month apart, were sent to space. And in 2004, they successfully landed on Mars. Even though these two Mars rovers had a six-year difference with Sojourner, but the technology was light years ahead. First, the weight was a lot heavier. So it went from Sojourner, which weighed 10 kilograms, to Opportunity, which weighed 185 kilograms. And NASA only used the most advanced tools. So for 2003 equipment, it was the best of the best. These rovers would go and explore rocks and take samples and test what it's made out of. And it even had a magnetic arm to see if there's any magnetic particles on Mars. These two Mars rovers, just like Sojourner, had solar panels, but it was way bigger and more powerful. You might think that some people are controlling these rovers like they control a remote control car. But you have to know that that's not how it works. These rovers are pre-programmed on what to do that day. Like in the morning, the NASA workers give the rovers a schedule. Like for example, they tell the rover, go 20 meters north, take a sample and examine it. And the rover spends the day doing that. And you have to know that controlling a rover from Earth is kind of impossible because each message from Earth to Mars could take up to 20 minutes. And it also takes 20 minutes from Mars to get back to Earth. So that 40 minute delay doesn't let you control the rover properly. So the programming is a way better option. 
A bad part about these Marsh Rovers was that they could only work during daylight because the only time they would start working is when there was sunlight and when the sun was gone, it would stop working. When these rovers wanted to send signal to Earth, first they would send it to the satellite around Mars and then the satellite would send a signal back to Earth and vice versa. When they were building and designing these rovers, they estimated that these rovers would work for 90 days and give us plenty of information about Mars. And after 90 days, they most likely will die and not work. But these rovers lasted way longer than 90 days and they worked for 15 years. And at the end, in 2019, they stopped somewhere on Mars and died. And since they only planned 90 days for these rovers, NASA had already sent another rover. And that was Curiosity, which landed on Mars on 2012, so seven years before Opportunity and Spirit died. Curiosity next to the predecessors is like a giant. It weighs 899 kilograms. For landing this thing on Mars, they had to use the most advanced landing system they've ever used. And because it weighed so much, they had to use a giant parachute. And at the end, a jetpack had to lower it slowly onto the surface. The jetpack would slowly lower to the surface and using cables, it would drop the rover extremely carefully onto the surface. The biggest advantage Curiosity had over the other two rovers was that it didn't have solar panels and the energy came from a generator. And what is the fuel to this generator? Plutonium-238. Plutonium is an atomic fuel which you could pretty much say that it's not gonna run out anytime soon. They also use Plutonium-238 in atom bombs. And this form of fuel helped Curiosity so it could work day and night. This rover is pretty much like a laboratory on wheels. It could do all kinds of tests. Like Opportunity and Spirit would go examine a rock and see what it's made out of. But Curiosity could literally drill a piece of rock, take the powder and put it inside of a laboratory and test what it's made out of. After nine years, Curiosity is still active on the surface of Mars. Curiosity is planned to work for 14 years, but the scientists say it might last longer than 14. The only big issue this rover has are the wheels, which are falling apart. And the reason for that is there's a lot of sharp rocks on Mars and Curiosity weighs a lot. And since NASA didn't want Curiosity to stay alone, Perseverance landed on Mars four days ago. This weighs a little bit more than Curiosity, and it's 1,025 kilograms. The technology of Perseverance is pretty much similar to Curiosity, but they fixed the main issues like the wheels and added more tools to it. But the point of sending this rover to Mars is that they want to see if there was life on Mars. And they want to see if there was ever life on Mars. And Perseverance also has another mission. And that is to test the atmosphere and the oxygen levels. Because it wants to help humans be ready when they land on Mars. The most awesome part of this rover is its landing. Because the NASA scientists had to wait 20 minutes to see if it was successful or not. Perseverance landed like this four days ago. Since Curiosity's landing was so successful, they also used it on this.
Perseverance has landed on this part of Mars and they believe that it used to be a lake and they also believe there was a river and Perseverance main mission is that to study the surface and see if there was life.